If you've had trouble with growing corn and actually getting cobs off of it, then this video is definitely for you. Okay, so when it comes to corn, you guys always say that you have problems with it. The reason for this is because they need to be in pretty large groupings in order for them to fertilize each other or to pollinate. And this pollination process is what gives us our actual cobs that you then eat. So the two varieties that I'm growing is an early sunglow variety. So these have a fewer days to harvest. Um, and then I'm doing a peaches and cream. So again, this one's a little bit later in the year, but this one comes up a little bit sooner. I don't really follow the rules when it comes to not mixing varieties in the same field. I mix them all the time. Now I will group these together and I will group these together, but they're in the same plot of land if you will the other thing that you really truly need to think about is the actual spacing so with corn it's not uncommon for the packaging to give you row spacing plant spacing and seed spacing so there's three different forms of spacing you need to follow the reason for the seed spacing being smaller than the plant spacing actually comes down to the fact that these plants don't transplant well, and that's because of the interface between the plant stalk and the roots. It's very sensitive to transplant. If the root stalk goes too low in the soil, the plant tends to die off and not do well. So corn doesn't transplant well, and because of that, we have to direct sow. Whenever we're direct sowing, it's not uncommon for not everything to germinate, whether it be just poor seed quality all the way to things like, for example, poor soil moisture or rodents, pets, etc., and so forth, going and taking the seed. Yes, sounds bizarre, but it's a very real thing. And so corn, classically speaking, regardless of variety, is gonna ask for seed spacing that's about four inches, and then plant spacing that's about 12, meaning for every three seeds you plant, you may need to remove every third physical plant. Now, I've, never had corn come up in such an intensity for germination that I've had to go through and then thin. It's not, I've never had it like carrots, for example, where I've had to do that or beets where I've had to do that. Never had that issue with corn. So I follow the four inch rule um, and I've, I get along just fine. I never actually have to go through and thin. So what I'm sewing into is at the farm. The reason I do this at the farm is because you need a lot of corn in order to get a healthy stock or healthy germination. And even on the farm, I find that the ones on the ends, so on this end, as well as that end, and then the ones on the sides, the rows on the sides, have poor levels of uh, pollination, and so less cobs. The ones that produce the cobs are the ones that are in between the two side rows and the middle. So with that being said, if you're gonna plant, for example, 50 plants in each row, you and you're gonna do four rows, you're only going to have 100 plants that are going to fully produce the two cobs that are typical of corn. So instead of the maybe 200 plants that you were guesstimating to have because the ones on the outer edges will produce either no cobs or maybe one or partially pollinated cobs, which is where you have a cob that's kind of like husky and then a couple gems in there. But other than that, it's not really edible, I guess you could say. like. You could feed it to chickens, but it's not, or you could shuck them if you wanted to freeze it, but not less than ideal. So that means you have to make sure your inner spacing planting is as many as you want. And that's why I do do it at the farm. The other way to do this would be uh, four plants and then four by four is the way you would do it. And again, the inner area is best. And I always plant it on my corn on this end of the garden because it does get hit with some wind out here. The wind in Saskatchewan in the last, I would say three years has become really intense and very plow wind like it never used to be that windy here but now it's just really truly excessive um and because of that i do plant them on this side because when that wind does come through it actually protects the rest of my garden and my smaller plants that maybe not necessarily able to take on this level of wind so i do protect my plants um, from this intensity whenever possible so another hack when it comes to corn is that you want to make sure that you hit the moisture depth line if you're going into a field that maybe is not like perfectly irrigated so something like what's behind me and um, just go until you hit the moisture line so moisture line is basically when the soil turns to a darker color 
you've hit it. So go to that depth. And then the other thing is actually walking paths. So in order to harvest your corn, you need to be able to walk up and down the rows. So do like 12 inches ish or more. So you do have a little bit of a pathway in between. So all I do is just do a step and a half because I don't have size 12 feet. Um, so I do a step and a half, which is, yeah, if it comes out to about 14 inches, and then I do my next line. So you want them together, but not super together that it's inconvenient for you to get in between and weed because corn, until it's established, it doesn't do well with um, weed competition. No seedling really does. So you do need to be able to get in there to weed. So if you're using, like what all I use is this. My father-in-law calls it a chop chopka or something like that, which is like the Russian, he's Russian. So that's like the Russian name for this thingy. But, and then he like sharpens it for me. So it's like an actual knife type. That's what I use to weed. Um, but yeah, you just wanna make sure you can get in between conveniently until everything's established. And then obviously in between conveniently when it comes to physical harvesting. So with that being said, I'm gonna get planting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.